Today, President Obama gave a speech at the Islamic Society of Baltimore. It was his first visit to a mosque in the United States in his presidency. If we're serious about freedom of religion, and I'm speaking now to my fellow Christians who remain the majority in this country, uh, we have to understand attack on one faith is an attack on all our faiths. And And when any religious group is targeted, we all have a responsibility to speak up. And we have to reject a politics that seeks to manipulate prejudice or bias and targets people because of religion. The president had this message for young people. I want to speak directly to the young people who may be listening. You know, in our lives, we all have many identities. We are sons and daughters and brothers and sisters, we're classmates, we're Cub Scout troop members, we're followers of our faith, we're citizens of our country. And today, there are voices in this world, particularly over the internet, who are constantly claiming that you have to choose between your identities as a Muslim, for example, or an American, do not believe them. If you're ever wondering whether you fit in here, let me say it as clear as I can, as President of the United States, you fit in here, right here. You're right where you belong. You're part of America, too. You're not Muslim or American, you're Muslim and American. Joining us now, Asra Numani, co-founder of the Muslim Reform Movement and the author of Standing Alone, an American Woman's Struggle for the Soul of Islam. Back with us, Jonathan Alter. Asra, I'd like to get your reaction to the president's speech today. Well, I didn't actually watch the president's speech as it was happening because I was standing outside on Johnny Cake Road by the police security barriers protesting President Obama's presence at that mosque. While his words are wonderful in theory, what he doesn't seem to understand is that many of us as Muslim women try to go into these mosques as places where we believe we belong and we are told to go to back doors and to go through back stairwells into basements and into balconies and I'm not speaking only hypothetically because on Sunday I went to that Islamic Society of Baltimore I walked through the front door asked to go to the prayer hall I was led to the third floor where there's this darkened space. It looks over the beautiful majestic space that you can see President Obama speaking in. All of those people who are there are allowed entry on this special interfaith day. And women are unfortunately barred in two out of three mosques in America with conditions that are separate and unequal. And on that Sunday, what I witnessed standing in front of the doors of the main prayer hall in which President Obama's stood there today and spoke, I watched a woman tell the girls to go pray in the gymnasium in this darkened space below the basketball hoops, and the boys got to go pray into that beautiful space in which President Obama stood. And so I think while his words are wonderful in principle, what they don't reflect is the struggle that we are having within our own faith for the soul of Islam, and unfortunately, President Obama has taken sides with a very hyper-conservative interpretation of Islam that then targets liberals and mainstream and feminists within our own faith. And that's the real tragedy to me. Jonathan. You know, uh, with all due respect to my Daily Beast colleague, Asra, I, I just strongly disagree. Uh, what said as, as it applies to the president's visit. You know, I'm Jewish and Orthodox Jews have the same kind of separation uh, in their synagogues. Uh, it's, it's, you know, horrible. Uh, I think it's a, a blight on uh, my faith that, um, that they do that. But that's not what the president's appearance was about. And I, I, th I think that saying. he spoke very eloquently to something that is very important for non-Muslims to understand. It was a message to non-Muslims as well as to Muslims. He wasn't trying to settle various disputes within Islam. He was trying to talk about what it means to be an American. And this is well, something that we need to hear now very okay. much. I think we're going to miss this man you, when you he leaves the presidency. To, you may need to hear Not this. Not me. 
Yeah. Other Americans need to hear well, it. Well, I'll tell I've you, I'm an, I, I am an yeah. American, and I didn't need to hear that message because I feel very comfortable in this country. I feel very safe. But where I do not feel safe is going into my mosques. We are afraid when we go into yeah. our mosques. We are afraid of walking into the shadows of men who are going to scold us. And I'll tell you something, Jonathan. If there was a church that said that blacks had to pray in a balcony, and there was a president that then went to that church and said that it was another issue that we need to discuss that was of greater importance, we would all be disgusted. And you even ironically called it a blight. For anybody to then endorse a space in which we all have such strong words as that, I think is a real tragedy. He wasn't and I'm really, space. And I'm really, he, he wasn't you, endorsing you, that, that gender is, segregation. That was not the point well, of I his can tell you that. I can tell uh, you that for those of us standing outside, including my 83-year-old father who has fought in our own mosque in Morgantown, West Virginia, for the right of women to have presence in those spaces, it was a very great insult. Something else, to throw women under the bus like that is a real tragedy. And to me, it's really ironic, especially at a time when the president is pushing for equal pay and is pushing for greater benefits for women in the military. This is the tragedy of all times for women. We are always thrown under the bus. We were the last to get the right to vote in America. And today, I'm so sad to be hearing from you as a colleague the same kind of, of, of evaluation that ends up saying, you know what? Your values, your needs are not as important as these uh, greater Oscar, needs. Can I ask you quickly before I, we're running out of time? After just one, could the White House have chosen a better location for a speech like this? Unfortunately, like I said, two out of three mosques in this country have these kind of blightful conditions, as Jonathan just actively put forward. We have some that are more liberal and more mainstream, if you ask me, uh, to values of Islam. It would have been very difficult, but I think he could have find, found a better choice. And you know what? Why not just have a lovely potluck dinner anyway? Why have? Why do you have to go to a mosque? He's done support? that in the past. He's done the you potluck know what? dinners. That's great. Uh, and, do and it they're again. Important. They're important. Do but it I think again. This was an important message to send. It was also given the political context and the attacks by the Republicans. Donald Trump today said he felt com Obama it was felt a, comfortable at the mosque. It, That's it was the a level very of tragic their symbol. And and I think he's trying to say to them. He's trying to push back and say to all of them, say to the entire Republican Party and the American people. Muslims are Americans too. We, this is an extraordinarily that, important message. We know that we are Americans. You, you might know it, we, but they don't. Donald Trump. You know doesn't what? Know it. We do not. Uh, we do, we do not need to speak to Donald Trump in order to, to define to our voters. agenda. And I find it unfortunate yeah. that we end up having to make political calculations, especially when Islam is being battled on such a political level. We need to return to issues of faith and and spirituality. This ended up becoming just another political agenda and what ends up coming what becomes the issue at cost then all of the noble efforts for reform that many of us are fighting to do and so tonight just hours after coming back rain drenched uh, on those from that street on Johnny Cake Road what happened on Twitter now I'm being attacked as a, the Islamophobe and the anti-Muslim that these politics want to try to generate and what we have to do is come back to a place where we support reformers that want to pursue the progressive values of America. All right we're gonna to have to leave it there for tonight. Asra Namani thank you very much for joining us and Jonathan Alter thank you